Um, I'm not going to hold you long here now because I have a feeling that it would be better to give you a longer supper break and then come back refreshed for the second ray. Um, yeah, do you like that? Okay, you know. I'm always very sensitive to the fatigue factor in students. All my life I've been that way. <laughs> oh, those were the days, right? All right. <laughs> Many a tale of endurance could be told. And have been told, yes, I, I suppose they have. Been. Is that on, uh, Justin? This thing, yeah. Good. So, look, um, <clears throat> although it's a subtle subject and really foundational and really belongs to the um, type of perception and identification of a master, does it begin to mean something to us? You know, you know even as a kind of uh, an idealized thought, something that will be part of our equipment as we live as parts of each other and parts of everything. Does it begin to register that way a little bit, you see? Does it? It's not just totally a vague thing, you know. I mean, it's the, in a way, it's the top of the, top of the heap, you know. DK hardly ever goes there because he knows where we are and how, what he has to train our, us to do, you know. We have, you know, our physical body is out of shape, our emotional body is a mess, we can't think. He's faced with that. <laughs> so he has to train us to be able to do all those things. But every once in a while, he hints at the further boundary or the boundlessness. You know, every, every once in a while, he gives you monadic thoughts and you just wonder, gosh, where's this coming from? And he says profound things and you just have to, whoa, you know, really ponder on this. He gives deep, deep things. When he, when he gives you Discipleship in the New Age, Volume 2, he's giving you a manual for initiation. He's giving you six formulas that are supposed to operate between each one of the initiations. And when he's giving you the 14 advanced rules for disciples and initiates, he's giving you the profound rules for group work in the Aquarian age, which even the hierarchy has to follow. Because there's some of those rules that refer to fourth and fifth degree initiates, okay? And not just to people of our nature. As a matter of fact, they kind of begin at the third degree, although there's a lower reflection uh, earlier in the game that we can begin to uh, assimilate, and we do. So we've just been given profundities. It's just a question of how deep we will go with them. And I, I can only imagine what the next installment will be. You know, I'm, I'm eagerly awaiting, <laughs> you know. We'll all be part of it if we want to. And the new schools will, uh, will emerge, the 14 schools will emerge, the preparatory schools, advanced schools, and the banded esoteric organisms will come together. And eventually any country of any development whatsoever will have its own esoteric or cult school. The 14 schools begin it, and it may take a few centuries or even rather more, but eventually every, during the Aquarian age, there'll come a time when every nation of every, any kind of development, you know, there's some new nations that really have to go through the physical, emotional, even mental level, you know, okay, not yet, but any, any nation that has any type of causal body development will have its own uh, esoteric school. And, and those schools will present their candidates for initiation, just the way uh, the church will and just the way masonry will. You know, it's a one, two, three. So the esoteric schools are largely a third-ray monadic enterprise. The church, second-ray monadic, masonry, first-ray monadic. They will all present their candidates. And we can be among those if we care enough and really, uh, you know, grab hold of our opportunities, seize the day. And, uh, you know, we read the other day, thank you so much, that whole thing about meandering feebly down the years, doing a little bit of what you want, and then, you know, ending with nothing. I assume that we may have done that enough times to not want to do the feeble meander. So, you know, purposefully grabbing hold of our opportunities as a group these next nine years until the great conclave of 2025 occurs. Then when we can expect right away esoteric astrology books from DK as he says, as he promises. He's not going to break his promise, you know. 
Are there any questions uh, based upon your uh, discussions, um, your revelations, your work with each other? Any, any questions? Any questions? Isolated unity. Living in it all the time, if possible, to ever greater degrees of intensity as the monad shines its force upon the secondary levels of identity with which we have identified, wrongly identified. One day we'll realize ourselves to have been the monad all along, forever. And what is the monad but the ray of the absolute that has arisen and flashed forth from the one and only great and infinite being? So, you know, I mean, we're never going to get rid of each other, you know that. We are all infinitely familiar to each other. As long as there's been anything which is forever, we've all been here. Not in the particular form that we are, but we're, you know, we are very familiar to each other. There's nothing that can escape familiarity. But we keep on acting out these different roles in the, in the drama, in the dance, in the play, in the creative project, whatever you want to call it. It's a creative process and it's a lot of fun once you stop suffering about it. <laughs> I guess it's just ignorance that uh, does that. So any, any um, well, you know, how many times have we been through this? It boggles the mind, you know. They say that, that one of his friends was... Um, Nietzsche was a great philosopher, and uh, he was a musician, and he was a friend of Wagner, and uh, I forget who it was that came to his house. They found him in complete despair, absolute despair, over the thought of eternal recurrence. <laughs> but for him, the eternal recurrence was absolute repetition of what had happened before, and you can see that would bring despair. But given the fact that there's absolute infinity, which is inexhaustible, the principle of unrepeatability will hold. And there will never be identicality in form and relationship. There will only be identicality in substance and being. So it's always new. It's always new. And so eternal recurrence has been with us forever and will be forever. You know, time is really hard to solve in that way. Uh, but uh, we might as well enjoy our uh, cyclic self-becoming, which we will never cease. I, I guess it's, you know, I mean, and, 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 no, and nobody wins unless everybody wins. Everybody's got to win. Even the, the brothers of the shadow, you know, who are they? We, we are them. They're going to win too. Everyone's going to win. And, um, and we are, well, I often think, you know, oh, they did that. Well, who, who's they? Who did what? I did everything they're doing. And they're doing everything I'm doing. And it'll all be seen in the last end. But ignorance prevents us from knowingly being each other, which we are. So that we've got to get into that state of consciousness. And there's some forms of Tibetan yoga that actually, you know, allow you to do that. You slip into the identity of the other, and you realize yourself as the other, and Christ could do that all the time, you see. So right now we're pretty encapsulated, but we won't be for long. Okay, so if there are no questions, <coughs> I think, it, would it be all right, uh, Eva, if we do the second ray tonight? Would that be good? Because then you'll be, ref you'll be refreshed, right? And I'll tell you what. I'll give you like two hours for supper, right? Is that good? And then, and then I'll readjust this thing again. This, this, uh, I don't know what's happening to the poor people out there that are trying to follow the schedule. But anyway, I will readjust this back to 6.30 and then we won't be here very late and uh, you don't have any real homework, you know, just, I just put it on the list just to, you know, be a little ornery, but you won't, not real homework, okay? And we'll do the second ray tonight. And, uh, and we will find that the second ray is maybe a little easier to relate to than the first ray formula, you know. Uh, pure reason, inclusive reason is more somehow within our grasp. And if you, if you really think about it, DK is such a, an amazing example of inclusive reason. What he's, you know, he, I often think of him, he's Gemini. He's the messenger 
a major messenger of the hierarchy. He's like, to me, he's like Jupiter and Gemini. Not Venus and Gemini, that's very good, but Jupiter and Gemini brings all the information together and uh, articulates it beautifully. I think that's where he's at. So usually in astrology, Jupiter and Gemini is kind of a weak position, but in occultism, it's a very strong position. It's a great second ray position. So anyway, that's inclusive reason. We're going to deal with that tonight and hopefully, you know, refresh yourself a little bit. And I don't want to, you know, beat a dead horse here. I just, you know, just feel good and come back at 630 and we're going to have one ohm for the road. <coughs> Okay, so, reminding us of the unity in which we all partake, and reminding us that you cannot help but meet yourself everywhere, in that state of self-realization which we have isolated from other realizations, We sound the Om to confirm our eternal participation in the one reality. sun is shining, have a light supper, bring your brain back with you, and uh, we'll get into the second ray of love, wisdom, inclusive reason, isolated, uh, pure reason. The bookstore is now open for half an hour. The bookstore is now open for half an hour, bye, 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 bye.